Love is God and God is love. A relationship without God is as good as using it because God is the foundation of love. Praise the Lord, friends. How are you? My name is John Nathan Awara. I work with Scripture Union in Northern Region. Today in studio, I am joined by my wonderful colleague and friend. And I'll invite him straight away to introduce himself and then we will continue. Yes, praise the Lord, friends. I am Reverend Deacon Job Okeng. I work with the Diocese of Lango. We are great partners and friends with Scripture Union. And of course, John, my personal <laughs> friend, you guys are very welcome to join us. May we pray. Lord, we thank you for this time together. And we pray that, Lord, as we dive in to share your plan for us to live together in families, may you teach us and may you guide us through this session. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. 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 Today we are talking family. It's a different series. We're talking family roles and responsibilities. Mm. Family series is what we shall be doing for most of the time that you'll be tuning in. You could catch us. Today I'm honored to host Reverend Deacon Jobo Kang. Thank you. Who is a very good supporter of Scripture in Uganda. And Thank most you. of you who know, Scripture Union works with children, young people and families. And today we're discussing family roles and responsibilities, to be exact. Mm. And uh, Reverend, yes. you have to tell us a little bit more about you. Who are yes. you? What do you do? Uh, people see you in a collar. What do you do? Yes, uh, like I said, Job. It's my name. I, when I'm among youth I prefer and children, I prefer to be called Uncle Job. <laughs> yes. So, but of course because and, of And me, Uncle John. Yes, so Uncle Job, so Uncle we John. Have, so, so you have Uncle JJ. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh. Yes, so I do a lot of ministry with children and youth. Uh, right now I'm doing ministry at the cathedral as a, a youth and children's minister there. I am in charge of youth ministries and children's ministries. And from time to time, with the diocese here, we, we do a lot of children's ministry. And so I am sold out to children and to youth that they grow to know Christ. And of course, where the children are, where youth are, and then you're able to reach families. And so by so saying family is in our heart. Diocese of Lango is yes. a strong partner of Scripture, Scripture in Union. Uganda. Yes. How do you find family ministry in the diocese? Yes, indeed. The, the family is actually the main unit of the church. In everything we do, from our sermons to the different ministries we're doing, we're targeting first and foremost the families. Yes. And so our ministries are, are geared to the families when we are interacting with mothers through the mothers' union, with the fathers through the fathers' union, with the youth through the youth ministries, and with the children through children's church we are actually reaching out to the families. And so the families looked at us different units that, uh, that come together to make the church here. Scripture Union works with different churches to do evangelism, discipleship, and life skills. So one of the churches we partner with is Church of Uganda, and the Diocese of Lango is part of the Church of Uganda. Like I said, we are handling family roles and responsibilities. And we want to define what a family is, according to the definition, which is uh, generally accepted in the world, a family is the smallest unit of society. The smallest unit of society. Society is big. A society is a community, but a family is what makes up that community. Mm -hmm. Don't you agree? I totally agree. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. Because in that society, then you have it composed of a type mm -hmm. and the quality mm -hmm. of the families you have. When you have uh, families that are well grown, well ministered to, and then you will have a society that is welcoming, that is peaceful, that is loving. And so I totally agree with the idea that the society you have mm -hmm. is composed of the kind of families you have. You as a reverend, uh, as, a, as a priest and a man of God, what does the Bible tell us? What is the origin of family? How would you explain origin of family? I know uh, you are married as well. Yes. And you have children. Yes. Uh, as you define family, would you briefly tell us a little about your own family and then tell us what do you think the Bible, what does the Bible say? Generally, 
a family is the smallest unit of society, but biblically, what is family? Yes, family is God's ideal for man. When God created Adam, he created Adam and put him in the garden. The garden of Eden, you're right about that. And uh, you told me to, to say a little about my family. I am married and I am married the way God wants us to marry uh, in church. And so I am wedded uh, to a woman, Claire, who is my wife. And together we have a son that the Lord has blessed us with. And so we wedded because we understand what the Bible tells us about how families are formed. Let me open just very briefly the book of Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 up to 28. It says here, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. Mm -hmm. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. Mm -hmm. Then God blessed them. Mm -hmm. And God said to them, mm -hmm. you can underline this, yes. be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing mm -hmm. that moves on the earth. So when you read this uh, small section in the Bible, then you realize God, after finishing creation, he then made a very important decision. He said, let us make man in our own image. And so he made man in his own image, but he did not make man as a singular being. He made them male and female so that they can live together as husband and wife, enjoying a communion with him. That's why he's in their image, so that man living as a family, husband and wife, can multiply, fill the world with his glory, with his goodness, with his kindness, with the nature of God as him, and then have dominion over everything. So God created man and woman so that they can have a family that will have dominion, help him actually, more like we can call it the governing, mm. governing the world. So we are, we, we, we are an arm of God in doing his ministration in the world. And that's why then that last verse ends by saying, then God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. And he goes on to dominion and all the things. Something comes to my mind and yes. I would have to question. What you just mentioned is that God has given us authority to help him on the earth. Yes, yes. And the best way of helping him, one mm. of the ways, mm. is through family. Is this true? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Because then now, through family, God then is now having a direct way to be in contact with everything in the world through families, godly families that have grown in the church, that are participants in the church, who are God-fearing, and then God is able to control the earth through so the way we treat the environment, the way we treat each other, the way we behave in the world is actually exactly what God would be doing. And so God now has dominion over the world through us. He will not come and walk on earth physically to make sure that the environment is being kept, his environment is being kept, make sure that people are living in the world peacefully. No, God is doing that now through families who are obedient to his calling as a family. This is good. Yes. So God's plan is that a man marries one woman yes. and the two become one yes. so they can produce children mm -hmm. and build a good home. Yes. But also remember that side. It's, however, these days, many people have destroyed this wonderful plan of God. Yeah. Uh, which are some of the ways that people have destroyed the, the, the plans of God? God is that man marries one woman mm -hmm and they live together in harmony, male or female, which yes. are some of the ways that this God's plan has been distorted. Indeed, man today, uh, because of not sticking to God's ideal for family, have gone astray 
uh, first and foremost because we do not see sex in marriage. You hear scenarios where people are, are practicing bestiality. I remember you used to do that a lot in yes. your life skills, yes. sexuality, sexual purity of the scripture union. And so people have distorted marriage and family because they, they don't look at a woman as should be a partner and a companion in the family. And so people, you hear about rape in families, you hear about adultery, you hear about fornication, and then of course now it goes as far as homosexuality, which is a big thing in other countries. And so marriage as one unit has That's been distorted because sex that should have been in married, marriage is not within marriage and so when you abuse that you abuse the institution of marriage now we have different types of families uh, yes. and different types of families one of them is um, a nuclear family yes. and a nuclear family is this where there's a father there's a mother and their biological children yes father mother biological children mm. then we also have extended family which has father mother biological children and an extension mm -hmm. of grandfather, grandmother. Mm. Um, this for me when I was growing up, yes. this was really ideal because you know, you'd have a grandfather disciplining children, a grandmother disciplining, helping to correct children, yeah. and children grew up in the ways yes. of God. Mm. However, Reverend, yes. we also know that there are types of families which have, which have sprung up, which are not God's original plan. Yes. For example, child-headed families. Yeah. Uh, because of many reasons. One of them is death yeah. of one parent, parent yes. the parent dies, or mm. both parents die, die yeah. and then a child becomes the head of that family. That yeah. becomes a child-headed family. Yes. So a child-headed family is a family where uh, a child is the one heading the family. Mm. We also have foster families mm. where children are taken into foster care. Yes. They're taken into someone else's home to mm. go and live there mm. Mm. and be with them. Yes. And that becomes a, a, a very interesting one because the child lives with someone whom they probably don't know. Yeah. Uh, a relative just help. Uh, no, no, not even a relative. Someone just helping them. Yeah. Then we also have single parent headed families where husbands run away or a husband has died or a mother is just mm. one parent. Yeah. So we have different types of families and these families are not God's original plan. Mm. Mm. So may I believe that God's original plan was a nuclear family yes. and an extended family because we mm. must extend. Yes. But when it comes to child-headed families, yes. foster True. families, single-parent, single parent for families. many reasons, or because mm. of sin and things like that, yeah. True. I feel that that's also a distortion of the family of God's original plan for family. True, true, mm. true. I agree. And uh, like indeed you have said, as a result of sin, God's ideal has been transformed. But God in this view, we were thinking of a unit where people live together, people love each other, where there's a symbol of the head of the family, who is a father head, like God himself, God the father. And then uh, you have the children and the mother in that family where they live in union with each other. Mm -hmm. And so when you say uh, the family has been distorted because these other things have come in and have distorted the idea of God's family. But in God's view, God was looking at one big family his people who live together under, under the leadership of one single leader who leads all these other people. But in each community, then you have families, nuclear families, who are all obedient to a father who gives them direction to a singular leader, who gives them direction to God. And so when you have a family where there is no father head leader. there, it gets hard for them to also understand the father head of God. And that is why it was very important for God to have single, um, uh, to have uh, nuclear families with a father, a mother, and the children, so that they can look to God as a father. Reverend, we have handled, uh, we've, ha we've introduced family. Yes. We've discussed what a family is, mm. and we've given God's ideal or God's uh, in original plan mm. for family. Mm. And you've mm. said that uh, God planned that. Uh, should be between a male and a female mm. and to produce children and then yeah. take dominion mm. and uh, or help govern the earth. the earth. We also talked about the different types of family briefly. Mm. Uh, the nuclear family, extended mm. family, the childhood family, the foster family, 
mm. and the single parent headed family. Mm. This is a good start for us. Yes. We can wind it down here and uh, look forward to the next time we have another conversation. But the next yes. conversation will be on specific roles of children and specific roles of parents in a home. Before we wind down, Reverend, you want to share something as we close? Yes. I think from what we have shared now about family, it is a good realization to remember that as families, we are units of God's arm of reaching out to the world. And so wherever you are watching us from, whether you are at home in your family or you are at school or wherever God has placed you, you have to use that unit you have, your family, remembering that you are actually God's workmanship. God wants to use you to reach out mm. to this world. And that is why he has put in that family. I think for me, this is the take home. It's also important that we appreciate whatever family, uh, because of distortion, mm. I could have been wanting to be born in a family where there's a father and a mother. Mm -hmm. But for mm. one reason or another, because of sin, because of mistakes made here and there, yes. I am born in a family mm. that has only a father or has only a mother. Uh, briefly, mm. how what could you mm. say about that? Because sometimes we've talked about God's ideal family, yes. but sometimes we are born in broken families. Yes, mm. yes, yes. Uh, thank you, yes, Uncle John, like you have said. Uh, as you were uh, uh, speaking, a scripture came to mind here, uh, Acts chapter 17, uh, verses, I think, 26, 27 there, where it says that before you were born, God knew where you would live, the boundaries of your existence. And so when you look at that scripture, then you realize that God actually knew that you would be in that family. Mm -hmm. But there's a purpose why, why you are in that family. God wants you to shine a light in that family. Even though God thought, uh, God's thoughts were that you should be in a family with a father and mother, God wants you to shine a light where there is, uh, there is darkness in that family. God wants you to be that new source of hope and to bring transformation where you are. And so even when you are in a single family, I mean, a, a, a single-headed family or a child-headed family, always remember that you are there to shine a light and to give be the candle that will come out of that family to the whole rest of the world. I think, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Children, uh, students, wherever you're watching from, thank you so much mm. for tuning into this particular episode. This is mm. a wonderful to have you. Next time, tune in, we'll be mm. discussing specific roles of either children or specific roles of parents in a home. God bless you. Till next time. Reverend, would you pray? We pray. God, we thank you for speaking to us today and reminding us that you created us to live in families but your purpose for family is that so you can reach the whole world through us we pray that lord you will be a channel we shall be a channel to be used of you in our families and in the community we live in that you'll use us in our families for your good work in jesus name we pray and believe amen, amen. 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 Thank God you. God bless you till next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Love is God and God is love. A relationship without God is as good as using it because God is the foundation of love.